I love cars, if you can't tell. I've brought cars up a few times on the show and I'll most certainly do it again. A certain kind of car that I get a special kick out of are sleepers, cars that are designed to look stock but are in fact far from it under the hood. Red Dragon sent me their K617 Fizz keyboard for a review and some mods and I had the same kind of plan. You'll be expecting a budget-friendly keyboard when you sit down, but you'll be surprised by a premium typing experience when you get up. First though, we gotta talk about the board itself. The K617 Fizz is a budget-friendly, entry-level hot-swap keyboard geared to folks who've never taken the keyboard hobby for a spin before and want something that they can customize without breaking the bank. It comes equipped with double-shot PBT keycaps and Red Dragon branded Outemu dustproof red linear switches out of the box. The keyboard itself doesn't weigh a whole lot, but still feels quite solid in its construction. The stabilizers are plate-mounted and come with just the right amount of lube on them not to be over-lubed, but also get rid of any stab rattle that might still be there. They sounded great out of the box, and I didn't need to touch them at all when I was modifying the board, because I didn't need to. No clipping, holy mods, band-aids, whatever, it just works. And we love it when things just work on the show, because I don't need to make them work. The keyboard is wired via USB-C, with the port coming out of the side. Now, there are a large amount of people that aren't fans of the side USB port, but Red Dragon is one of the few companies that does this, but they also throw in an elbow cable in there to make your life just a little bit easier. There is one drawback to the board though, and it's a rather nasty one. The keyboard is a hot swap, but the sockets are the problem. Oh yeah, I can hear you groaning. You know exactly what these are, motherfucker. These are the dreaded old-style Outemu sockets, and you will hear and see people bitching about these things to no end all over the internet. They're an issue because these Outemu sockets are built to accept only Outemu and their boba line of switches. Akko switches and their sub-brands can also fit in these sockets as well. The reason why these can't accept a switch by Cherry, Cali, or another clone is because of the pins on the switches themselves. The pins on Outemu branded switches are thin enough to fit an Outemu sockets. Cherry and those clones use thicker pins for their switches. It is possible to shove a switch that's not made by Outemu or Akko into the board, but most boards that use the old style sockets only take three pin switches, they're a bitch to insert, and it's just... Just don't. Red Dragon sent a K631 to a friend of mine on YouTube, MechTech, and that board has the proper clamp style hot swap sockets that the hobby prefers. The K617 is an average board for an enthusiast like myself, with the only drawback being the sockets, but it might just be perfect for someone who doesn't give a shit about the kinds of things I do and just wants something that works, and if that's you, this is a stellar candidate for that role. I, however, I'm a posh bitch, and I'm not one to settle for stock in anything if I can handle it. Much like building a sleeper car, you want a good project car to use as a base. An average user would buy a Civic and drive it normally, but an enthusiast would buy a Civic, chop the exhaust off, and then swap a lawnmower engine in there. The K617 is an average board for the average user, but as an enthusiast, I see a playground, and that's where the K617 really shines the brightest. When I first took this thing apart, I noticed a lot of things. The case itself provides a good bit of room to do kind of whatever you want, so I decided to put something there. Here we are in our bottom case in our uh, outdoor workshop area. I went to the hardware store and they didn't have any liquid silicone, uh, but they did have Flex Seal liquid. So I figured, you know, this would be kind of um, what we could use. I have no idea. I've never heard of anybody pouring liquid Flex Seal into a keyboard before for, in place of like liquid silicone, but it's kind of the same thing, probably. I don't fucking know. Come on. I can see you working. Come on. Come on. I know you want to. Come on, Phil. Give me your swifty goodness. Oh, that sounds horrible. Oh, it looks like his swifty goodness, too. Oh, shit. All right, so I think what we just need to do is... I got a couple of playing cards, and I think I can use these to sort of direct the, uh, you know, Phil's swifty goodness here. This stuff is thick. Jeez, I've never actually used liquid flex, uh, flex seal before. This shit is uh, really thick. So I think if I just... Uh, do that and then we can you know guide it with the playing cards and then just kind of do that keep going a bit I'm actually surprised I haven't made a fucking mess yet because usually that's what happens when I do this kind of stuff genuinely have no idea what the fuck I'm doing and I think it's pretty clear by now that uh that that's the case do a little bit more on this side. Hope you like cicada noises because I live in fucking Maryland and that's all you hear 24 seven during the summer. This really is the liquid rubber pour of all time. I actually think I need a little bit more on this side. Just like that. 
Oh, that was even, even that was a little too much. Last thing I want is the USB-C port right there to uh, get covered up by this liquid silicone crap. There we go. I think that would do it. We're, uh, we're gonna see how this dries and hopefully, uh, hopefully I didn't make a massive mistake. Since I can't use another brand of switches aside from the ones that came in the box, I decided to stick with the ones that came in the box. They are Red Dragon branded Outemu Dustproof Linear Reds. I'm assuming the dustproof part comes from the fact that the stem covers up most of the opening in the top housing, but I have no idea. They aren't Kali box clones, and there's no box encasing the stuff inside, so the dustproof bit there is a little bit lost on me, but whatever. These were pretty scratchy, so I lubricated them with Crytox 205 and then bag lubed the springs. I also ripped up some pieces of foam and threw them inside the bottom of the case to help cover the area that I didn't cover with the flex seal. I would have done a full tape off of the PCB, but I figured that since the flex seal and foam were in there, I wouldn't need to worry about it. Since everything now is said and done, we can do a cost breakdown. The keyboard itself is normally $49.99, but it's $44.99 at this current moment. The foam was free as I stole it from a package my roommate opened, the can of flex seal was $17.50, and the Crytox lube was $9 from Amazon. Subtotal cost of the mods comes out to $26.50, with the entire shebang coming out to a cool $76.49. We've taken the K617 and turned it into something better than it was before it came into my shop. It's even more of a solid typing experience than it was before. This guy serves as a good base for whatever mod project you want, but those Outemi sockets will be something that you need to consider. Either make peace with the reds or go with some Akos, because you're not going to be able to use what you really want to. Huge thanks to Red Dragon for sending the K617 over to me, I really do appreciate it and I had a blast messing with it. If you'd like to pick this board up for any other Red Dragon product, including this key switch tester or this really cool mousepad coaster, you can head over to reddragonshop.com and use my code KEN10 at checkout for 10% off of your orders as many times as you want. Thank you guys so much for swinging by. I appreciate your face. Remember to subscribe and stay tuned. The sound test will play you out. I'll see you guys next time and take care.